In this test yourself video, I'm going to look at the organic synthesis questions from the 2017 and 2018 organic chemistry papers. So that's paper two. So I've got a link to the questions in the description of the video. So if you want to have a go first, click on the link, download the questions and then play on when you're ready for the answers. OK, so what I've done is I've literally just extracted the parts of the questions to do with organic synthesis. So you can see this first one here starts at part C. So we've got to show the structure of the intermediate and the formula of the reagents for each stage. So obviously if you uh, want to brominate this nitrobenzene, you need to react it with Br2, but you also need a catalyst. So you could either go for FeBr3 or you could go for AlBr3. And the product is this one here, and obviously we've got the bromine at position 3, so it's got to be at position 3 in the intermediate. Second part of the question, we've got to go from the nitro group to the amino group. So we reduce that with a mixture of tin and concentrated hydrochloric acid. And the final part of the question, obviously if the reduction stage was carried out before the bromination, you're going to have an NH2 group direct in the bromine and NH2 groups are 2,4 directors so they would make the 2-bromo product and the 4-bromo product. Next question, very similar again, got to give the formulae of the reagents and the structure of compound G. So I'll start with reaction 3. So if we look at what's changed, we've gone from a nitrile group to a carboxylic acid group and to do that you need aqueous hydrochloric acid. Reaction one now, so we're forming a hydroxy nitrile. So you would do that from a carbonyl compound. And so the carbonyl compound that would create that would be methanol, just with the one carbon, because there's two in the product. And finally, reaction two, we're going from the nitrile group to the CH2NH2, so amine group. So we're going to react that with hydrogen and a nickel catalyst. Moving on to the next question, we've just got to complete this flow chart. So we'll go this reaction first. So we're going from a carbonyl compound, so an aldehyde or a ketone, to compound K, which is a secondary alcohol. So the OH carbon has got two carbons directly attached. So this is going to be a ketone, so we just need to draw the corresponding ketone, which looks like that, and the reducing agent is NaBH4. So if we're moving along this way now, we've got a mixture of sodium bromide and sulfuric acid, so that's going to create a haloalkane from this secondary alcohol. So basically, we just need to substitute the OH group for the Br. So last part of the question, we're taking this secondary alcohol and we're reacting with an acid catalyst and heat. So that's a dehydration of an alcohol reaction. So in other words, we're going to remove water and we're going to create um, isomers, which are alkenes. To get the alkene structure, we need to take the OH off, obviously, and we take an H from an adjacent carbon. So we can take the OH and that H or the OH and that H. So the structural isomers would look like that. Next question, so compound B is reflux, you can see I've highlighted that, with excess acidified potassium dichromate 6 to form a single organic product. So it's obviously been oxidised, so we need to establish what kind of alcohol groups we've got in compound B, and that will help us work out how many times it can be oxidised and what the um, final functional groups would look like. So this one first, um, we've got a primary alcohol here. So under reflux, that will go to a carboxylic acid. This alcohol group here is a secondary alcohol. So that will only go to a ketone. And this alcohol group on the end here is a tertiary alcohol. That doesn't get oxidized at all. So in terms of the number of oxidations that are taking place, this has been oxidized twice. Firstly, to the aldehyde, then to the carboxylic acid. And this has only been oxidized once. So the total number of moles of oxidizing agent is going to be three. So I'll just draw the products up and then I'll explain the balancing. 
So the product, the organic product looks like that. So you've got your carboxylic acid group there, your ketone group there, and that tertiary alcohol group still intact. The number of waters is two, and that's because in this oxidation here, you only get water produced in the first oxidation to the aldehyde, and in this oxidation here, you only get the one water produced to the ketone. So two moles of water. Moving on to the flow chart now. So compound C, when it reacts with excess methanol, so alcohol and sulfuric acid, we're going to get an esterification reaction. So basically these groups here, these carboxylic acid groups, are going to turn into ester groups. So the ester will look like that. Compound C with steam and phosphoric acid catalyst. So that's a hydration reaction. So in other words, we're going to add water across this double bond. So H on one carbon, OH on the other carbon. And because this is symmetrical, it doesn't matter which way around you do it. So that's what you'd get there. And the final reaction, the polymerization of compound C. Notice it's got a carbon-carbon double bond. So we'll get addition, polymerization. So my top tip is always try and make your um, monomer look like an ethane molecule, which is what I've done there. And it makes drawing of the polymer repeat unit much, much easier. So literally all you would do is break the double bond, put your end bonds on, and there you've got your repeat unit. Now it doesn't matter that I've gone for both carboxyl groups at the top there. Remember this is a sigma bond, so it can freely rotate. So it doesn't matter if you've put them both up, both down, or one up and one down. So moving on to the next question now, we'll go across the middle first. So we're going from this cinnamaldehyde, so aldehyde functional group, is changing into a hydroxynitrile functional group. Now we've already seen this reaction in a previous question and the reagents were sodium cyanide and sulfuric acid. If we do this reaction next, there's potential to maybe miss one of these out. So we've actually got two functional groups that can react with the excess hydrogen and nickel catalyst. We can hydrogenate the carbon-carbon double bond and that will obviously turn into an alkane, we'll just saturate it. The CN group, the nitrile group, can also react. We've seen that one before in this, uh, these sets of questions. That will go to an amine group. So I'll just draw the structure up now. So if we do this one now, so we've got an aldehyde group, which is reacting with NABH4, that's a reducing agent, so it's going to go to a primary alcohol. So that's what you would make there. And then the final reaction, we're reacting this hydroxynitrile with aqueous acid. So that's going to hydrolyze the nitrile group to a carboxylic acid group. So moving on to the final question, split over two pages, this one. It's about aromatic carboxylic acids and derivatives. So starting in the middle, compound H, notice we've got a phenol, OH groups directly attached to the benzene ring. So phenol group and a carboxylic acid group. So this, these two reactions are testing your knowledge of uh, acidity reactions. So sodium carbonate is only a weak base. It can only react with the carboxylic acid group. So that's going to generate that compound there. Whereas sodium hydroxide is a much stronger base. It can react with both the phenol OH group and the carboxylic acid OH group as well. The next reaction, compound H with Br2, so phenols react with bromine. Now, normally there'll be an excess of bromine, you can get that 246 tri bromo substituted product. It hasn't said excess, so I'm just going to go for a mono substituted product. But the mark scheme here said you could have a di substituted or even a tri substituted product if you wanted to, and you can put them anywhere you want on the ring. Anyway, that's the one I've gone for. Okay, so last part of the question, we've got to go from compound H to an acyl chloride. So essentially, we're going to convert this carboxylic acid group to an acyl chloride group, and that's done by reacting with thionyl chloride. But we've got to give the formula, and that's SOCl2. So the acyl chloride would look like that. And then what we've got to do is polymerize it and show two repeat units of the polymer formed. Okay, so this can polymerize because we've got an OH group and an acyl chloride group. Now, acyl chlorides can react with alcohols effectively, and so we can polymerize them. 
and we eliminate HCl as a result. So I've put two monomers up there because we've got to draw two repeat units. So if I just lasso out the key parts and then join what's left together and that's going to be our two repeat units. So there's the two repeat units there. Just be careful with your end bonds. So you can see I've lassoed out this hydrogen here and this chlorine here so the end bonds reflect that. Common mistake I would see if I was marking work, I would see an, uh, a bond to an O there whereas we've already got it here.